Boris Johnson overruled scientists who told him to introduce a lockdown three weeks ago, while ignoring warnings that his plans won't stop the coronavirus. Didn't this guy almost die of COVID-19? You'd think even that would make him more empathetic. Nope. You telling me that closing the pubs an hour early wasn't effective? I think this a lot more complex and what we're really witnessing is a breakdown in a core relationship. About 10 days ago the Labour Party began to hammer away at the government asking them for the scientific evidence that underwrote the 10 o'clock pub rule. It seems highly likely that a member of SAGE or a knowledgeable and sympathetic civil servant had tipped them off that this had been done on the fly, quite possibly by some shadowy policy unit lurking within Downing Street, whose name might be Dominic. Suffice to say, Johnson ducked and dived and refused to publish anything. These latest minutes from SAGE only add to the suspicion that there's another body somewhere playing a role now. To perhaps understand what looks like having happened though, it's worth going back and looking at what SAGE advised in February and March, they made a lot of mistakes. Variously they advised the following, amongst other things. Treat COVID by using the emergency flu strategy. Keep ports of entry open for visitors as there was little benefit in closing them. Keep London transport running as normal for the same reason. Face masks were of little benefit. Keep large events and sports open as there was little benefit in shutting them. Abandon contact tracing once the virus took hold, something Chris Whitty would later cite as his single biggest personal regret. All of these policy positions have since been reversed. There's some pretty bad misses in there. One rather suspects therefore that the government began to lose confidence in SAGE, and it was notable in the spring that the Center for Biosecurity was increasingly being name-checked in their answers, SAGE seemed to be taking more of a backseat. Then the summer came round and Johnson conceded that there would need to be inquired eventually. At about the same time he started doubling down on the idea that he'd followed the science throughout. Anyone who was working in a political environment could see where this was leading. He was preparing the ground to blame Sage. This period also coincided of course with the elevation of Dido Harding from the Jockey Club in Newmarket to lead the revamped track and trace system, without the track, and precious little trace. She too quickly engaged in blaming Public Health England. Witty and Valence duly appeared before the Parliamentary Committee and began defending themselves, Valence in particular, they realized they were being prepared as the expendable scapegoats, and whereas there's plenty of evidence to suggest that Sage has made a lot mistakes, they were clearly engaged in the time-honored tradition of covering their arses. One suspects that Sage might have layered this on quite heavy now, as the strength of the language has changed from that which they were using back in February. What we could be beginning to see here is the opening shots in Battle of the Blame, with Sage anxious to get something into the public record. Gee you would think if there was a simple switch to stop the coronavirus that we would have all flipped that switch by now. As a scientist, we're not the source of all good decision making, nor are our conclusions the only way to understand the world and they're not necessarily the best way to achieve humanity's goals in the face of adversity. Boris Johnson has a responsibility to protect livelihoods as well as lives. That includes protecting businesses that employ people and provide them with income to buy food to eat. The problem of coronavirus is a multidisciplinary problem and good politicians need to make decisions based on all these disciplines. Sadly, there is not an ideal solution that keeps everyone alive, healthy, wealthy, and productive. It is the job of the scientists to give advice to the politicians. In the eyes of a virologist, the best option is to lock everyone in their house for two weeks. A politician's job is to take that advice and advice from economists, sociologists, and many more experts and then make a decision. I disagree with the reporting of this in the media, and I'm as anti-Boris as they come. However, it's not that he's ignoring what scientists have told him, it's that scientists only look at it from a perspective of how can we stop the virus and of course the answer is to close everything down. However, we aren't robots that you can just keep turning off and on on a society level. The same way if someone asked a scientist how can we stop global warming, they could say no one is allowed to drive a car anymore it would work but, they don't take other factors out of their remit into account, 
which is what Boris is trying to do. Boris has to also balance the economy and people's mental health. That's why saying just lock the country down again, why is Boris ignoring the scientists is such a sensationalist thing to say. He's not ignoring them, he's trying to strike a balance between total lockdown and letting people continue with their lives. The number of businesses that will go bust and the number of suicides and impact on mental health that a total lockdown would cause in my opinion outweighs the problems people have with a three-tiered system. Personally, I think opening up universities has been one of the major causes of the spikes, along with bench drinking culture exasperated by large population densities. I honestly think a tiered system makes the most sense. And this is the guy who is leading us to Brexit. I wonder if the masks magically turn into a parachute whilst falling over the cliff. Three weeks, Trump has been ignoring scientists for eight months. It wasn't scientists it was part of SAGE, and SAGE alone don't dictate policy. Economists, sociologists, etc. also gave input. Wait, I've seen this one before. JPG, the scientists aren't the ones who will be fucked by the economy going under. Saving lives from this virus is important but life isn't worth living if you have no job to afford to do so and for hundreds of thousands that's a bitter reality we have to face as regular people. The simple answer to reduce the risk is for people to smarten up, wear protective gear, follow the guidelines and stop being selfish cunts. This is more apparent than ever to me as my mom lost her job in the first lockdown and despite that almost every single one of my college friends have gone to uni, acted like the virus is a hoax and then have tested positive after attending massive illegal parties. Let Corona run rampant. 2. Brexit shit show continue. 3. Blame Corona for everything. OMs have also opposed nationwide lockdowns, so in fact, Boris also appears to be following scientists' plans. A lot of factors need to be taken in consideration while making these kind of decisions. You have to take into account scientists' opinion when taking any decision, but you can't just implement everything they say as they lack knowledge and expertise in other areas. A good politician needs to take everything into account and then make an informed decision that's best for the people, even if that's not what they want. LOL. I love it when some of the sage advisors decide to go straight to the media when they don't get their way. If you listen to what epidemiologists have to say, they tell governments the rough risk level and measures they believe will help, but don't give full policy advice. And, not all scientists are in agreement as to the effectiveness of lockdowns. Plus, you can recommend a lockdown as a successful way to contain COVID, but overlook other public health issues. I'm kind of fed up of these headlines, it's a massive oversimplification of the decisions that have to be made and COVID policy does not exist in a vacuum. If a scientist slash policy advisor wants to voice their opinion on media then that's fine, but they shouldn't send out leaks pretending that they speak for the whole board.